Hello Interwebs and welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I want to just briefly discuss an issue that cropped up in the United Kingdom surrounding the trans community in the past few days. Um, it is an issue that has not gotten a lot of press, but it is a very, very important issue that is dramatically affecting the trans community. But it is also, while I am going to talk specifically about that, um, emblematic of a much, much, much larger problem in both the United Kingdom and the United States when it comes to uh, a lot of the vitriol and hate and issues facing the trans community in both of those countries and around the world as well, um, but especially in the United States and even more so in the United Kingdom. And that is around TERFs, trans exclusionary radical feminists, um, who are a very anti-transgender group uh, that often portray themselves as feminists, uh, but they are not, uh, let me be clear about that, um, who, use the rhetoric and veil of feminism and their weird interpretation of it in order to directly target and attack the trans community. Now, unfortunately, normally I would script out this video and have a lot more to say and give a lot more history and, and prepare a lot more educational material uh, for this type of video. But unfortunately, as many of you know, I am moving to a new state in the very near future. So I don't have the time, unfortunately, to do that education and history lesson. So I do apologize to anybody who may not know exactly what I'm talking about. But I do want to say this right up front uh, before I get into the actual issue at hand and, and kind of talk about it very briefly in, in the sadly too short a time that I have to talk about it because my life is kind of busy at the moment. But I want to say this. Uh, this issue that I'm going to talk about, what happened recently, is emblematic of a larger issue with TERFs. And it has made me very... Um, aware of the fact that uh, something that I've been kind of putting off because it was going to require a lot of my emotional labor and um, mental labor to do um, needs to be done. And that is, I need to do a whole video on TERFs, their history, how to spot a TERF, where their ideology comes from, break it all down, um, and, and why it is harmful and dangerous. And while I've done some of that work in relation to JK Rowling, who recently came out with a lot of views that are in line with TERFs, and so I did a lot of that research for those videos. So if you are curious right now, you can check out those videos. I do think a larger context to the history and damage that TERFs have done outside of JK Rowling, who is just, uh, someone who is the current lead figurehead and emboldener of them, whether or not she is an actual TERF herself or views herself as a TERF, uh, she is certainly a someone who they look up to um, and is helping push their cause, whether it is intentional or not. Um, so I am just realizing that it would be beneficial to talk about TERFs sans JK Rowling. And I want to make a promise, a statement of intent to do a video on TERFs that will probably be a very long, like hour long video takedown of and breakdown of TERFs and their ideology, where it comes from, how to spot a TERF, things like that. While also doing in my own trademark way, trying to be empathetic towards where TERFs come from and why they come from, because there is an amount of empathy that I have from why they feel this way, or at least a large majority of them feel this way, because it does stem out of trauma in many cases, this ideology. Um, not all of them, but some of them. Um, so I do have a, a bit of empathy, uh, while also still holding them accountable for the damage they have done. So I just want to put that out there that I will be making a video on TERFs. And sorry that there's this big preamble to this, but I think it's more important that I actually just state this statement of fact before I actually talk about this, this really kind of minutia issue, um, going on here. But for, let's actually talk about what I'm sort of been dancing around here, but the specific issue going on in the United Kingdom right now is that, uh, for those of you who don't know, the United Kingdom has a national health service, which is sort of the big healthcare service uh, in the United Kingdom. And they do offer trans-related healthcare. You can get trans-related healthcare like hormones and gender confirmation surgeries. But unfortunately, under the NHS, you have to go through certain very specific routes, like seeing very specific gender therapists uh, who there aren't that many of, and they are often in specific locations that not every trans person has access to in the United Kingdom. So the waiting times and ability for trans people to access these the NHS doctors that they need to, that they are required to in order to progress in their trans healthcare, um, are very hard to access. And there are often waiting lists for many, many, many years in order to get access to this healthcare, which is a timeline for many trans people, especially young trans people who are about to go through puberty, will not have access to. 
And as I've talked about in numerous other videos, giving people affirming healthcare, trans people affirming healthcare has drastic uh, effects on trans people's lives moving forward. Uh, a lack of access to trans affirming healthcare can lead many trans people to suicide, depression, uh, being pushed out from their families and the community. Uh, trans affirming healthcare can directly save trans people's lives. And I don't have the studies in front of me, but I've referenced them in other videos and they are, um, they are definitive that giving trans people affirming healthcare uh, can help them. So a lot of people are unable to access these doctors in the UK or have to wait a very long time to access that. And so as a result, many turn to private health care in order to get quicker access to trans affirming health care. Um, and one of these is gender GP, which gives many uh, trans people access to hormones um, like estrogen and testosterone. I am on estrogen, for example. I have taken it for many, many years and it's part of my regimen for trans-affirming health care. But recently, uh, an article came out in many UK papers that was pushed by TERFs, uh, was basically a, a pushing of TERF ideology, which is that any trans-affirming health care is damaging towards trans people, or damaging towards women, trans people, everybody in general. Again, I, I sadly do not have the time to get full education of this, um, and I do apologize for that. Um, but basically it was a hit piece full of irrelevant facts, misleading facts, incorrect facts, uh, basically surrounding the idea of uh, puberty blocking drugs that and, and hormones as well being given to younger uh, trans people. Now to be clear, younger trans people who are younger than 18, and I think most trans people agree with this, is that they should not necessarily be given hormones until they are of an age, I, I don't know the specific age in, in, the, in the UK, but of an age to be able to understand that they would be irreparably changing their bodies taking certain hormones. But there are drugs like um, uh, uh, puberty blocking drugs that can prevent uh, puberty from happening, which can also cause irrevocable changes and be incredibly damaging to a trans person's mental health and physical health down the line if allowed to continue. Um, so you can take these, uh, you know, puberty blocking pills in order to give the trans people a little bit longer to mature and understand the decisions that they are making when it comes to hormones. Um, but sadly, many TERFs try to push this fact that those drugs are harmful to, to, to kids. Um, when really all it does, and there's been shown studies that these pills do no harm, these drugs do no harm to trans people. If they go off of them, they just have hormones, they have puberty just a little bit later in life. But TERFs likes to push this idea that it is harmful to trans kids, harmful to kids in general, uh, is damaging and, and, and basically flooding their ideology with that. And this article came out that basically postulated this theory and, and made it go more public than uh, had previously been known. And because of that, uh, the one of the private healthcare systems, one of the biggest, Gender GP, that gives a lot of trans people hormones, has shut down all of their trans affirming healthcare uh, drugs going out. That includes things like estrogen. So many trans people woke up one day, people who had been on estrogen for years to people who had just started estrogen um, and testosterone and many other trans-affirming drugs, no longer, no longer have access to those at the moment, at least at the time of this recording. I need to tell you how harmful and damaging that is. I have been on hormones for years. I inject hormones every two weeks. If I am off hormones for two to three days, I feel the effects of it immediately. It's like going through menopause. I feel frustrated, my emotional health goes up and down, I am fatigued, I am physically unable to do things as well as I am able to, I need to lie in bed all day, I snap at my roommate a lot more, I'm not able to think as clearly and as cognitively, and that's just me, if I forget to take estrogen, I'm like, oh crap, I forgot to take it, and it, I take it two to three days later. Imagine being off of it for weeks. And that's what many trans people are facing right now, how scary that is. It can also cause many problems to, our, to trans people's health. Being off the hormones for that long can cause heart problems and many other problems like bone density issues and things like that in the long term. So this is a very real effect on trans people right now immediately if this drug, if estrogen and testosterone and other trans affirming drugs are taken off the table for them as they have been because of this hit piece and making this private healthcare scared to give out these drugs for deemed like damaging children or whatever. Um, and again, a hit piece based on incorrect facts and mis intentionally misleading facts. So that's really scary for a lot of trans people. And as I said, it is scary on not just a ideological level, but scary on a very like my personal health may be affected very soon level, which is horrifying and awful.
to take away someone's necessary health things. As I said, it helps mental health in the long term and also is needed for people who are on it, who have been on it for a long time. So I don't necessarily know enough of the machinations of transgender politics in the UK, which is again part of why I need to do research. But again, this all points back to the fact of how big a deal TERFs are becoming. They have been around for a very long time and I do know a lot of the history of them. Um, they are not something new, but I also know that the problem with TERFs is that they, like I said, couch a lot of their views and thoughts in this, we are feminists. They are not but they use the verbiage and language of feminism to hide their really transphobic, horrible views that can damage not only trans people, but women in general, uh, cis women or trans women, cis being non-transgender women. And like I said, I've done videos on it, breaking that down. So I will just say this, I wanted to bring people's attention to the issue that that is something in the UK happening right now. Um, Hopefully there will be solutions to that going forward, but at least wanted to draw people's attention to it and make a statement of fact that I am, I stand with all of you of my trans brothers and sisters and NB pals out there in the UK. Um, and that I do intend to do a video breaking down this further. And I will do a video and uh, breaking down this further um, and, and breaking down what TERFs are. Sadly, that won't be for a little bit because I have my move ahead of me. Um, and this video will take time and labor, both mental and physical in order to do, but I do intend to do it. So I just wanted to state that outright so that people know it's coming and so that I am held accountable for making it at some point um, in hopefully the next three, four months. But I at least want to draw people's attention to it. Again, sorry that this video is kind of off the cuff, a little bit rambly. Um, I'm much better when I have a script in front of me, uh, which is what I intend to do at some point. So I just wanted to say it and put this out there and say that I stand in solidarity with my UK trans brothers, sisters, and MB pals as well. So uh, live long and prosper, everybody, and um, sending love to everyone in the UK. A huge thank you to my amazing patrons who make this channel happen, and an extra special thank you to Miranda Janelle, Ashley Allen Bokikio, Eli Bergmas, Ashlyn Solstice, Christina Dalliance, Greg Gillum, Stephen Kleinard, Boyd and Mary Beth Earl, Wellington Marcus, Wayne Twitchell, Buttonier, Ish the Mad, Munir Amlani, John Steele, Gavin Robinson, William Stewart, Michael Beam, Spock TOS, BBD, Nathan Olson, The Sir Spence, Zach Cody, Bree Beecher, Maeve, Chloe Dollar, Subraxis, Wen Dizzle Bizzle, Tanya Trummer, Gretchen Badger, Dante St. James, Polly Mina, Piston Twisted Garage, Mark the Edge, and Din. I could not do this without all of you, so thank you, thank you so much, especially this month.